<sighs> Hello? Marty! You're awake! Good! Ah, uh, Emmett, uh, where are you? I'm down at the expo. I snuck out early to avoid my pop. If he knew I was about to make a publicly scientific spectacle of myself, he'd hit the roof. Why didn't you wake me up? I tried to give you a nudge before I left, but you were practically comatose. How long has it been since you slept? Aside from being knocked unconscious, I'm not really sure. Anyway, I left you back at the lab to perform an important mission. On the table next to my law books, there's a device plugged into the wall. I, uh, I think I see it. Is it glowing? Yeah. Is that good? Good? It's fantastic! Glowing means my static accumulator is charged up and ready for action. Bring it down to the high school and we'll... Damn! What? It's Edna! But... Okay, Emmett. One static accumulator coming up. Jeez, Doc. Watch out. You almost ran me over. Sorry about that, Martin. This vehicle is sometimes difficult to control. Uh, yeah. Hey, are you okay? After that argument about Emmett last night... I... I'm fine. Thank you for asking. So, how are the time circuits? Still broken. I've got a few ideas, but I'm occupied with other problems today. So, is that what I'm destined to build for the Expo? Yeah, it's a static accumulator. Emmett spent all night building it. Turned out he didn't really need to see Frankenstein after all. He just needed a little push. And, and some lightning. Fascinating. I also had an epiphany last night. Doc? I realized that it wasn't Edna that made my life miserable. Doc! It was science! Even if you screw up Emmett's chances at the Expo, there's no way he'll give up science now. He's too committed. You don't know me like I do. After he fails at the Expo, he'll be in need of comfort. And Edna's already arranged a romantic little trip up to the lake. You can't want Emmett back with Edna. She used you to turn Hill Valley into a police state. She used my science to turn Hill Valley into a police state. But if I don't become a scientist, she'll never get the chance to vent her crazier ambitions. You can't give up science. You love science. Correction. My younger self loves science. But if Emmett doesn't go through with a demonstration at the Expo, his dreams of being a scientist will dip just enough for Edna to step back into his life and steer him down another path. Doc, I'm begging you. You haven't thought this through. Haven't I? I guess we'll both find out. One thing's for sure, Emmett Brown's life will be a whole lot less complicated without a time machine in it. No! Ah! What the hell? Where'd it go? Oh, come on! static thingy Bedlam at Brown divorce hearing Wife takes potshot at a strange hubby, famed industrialist Emmett Brown. I don't believe it. He's still fated to marry her. I can't reach it. I can't reach it. Gotcha! <laughs>
future is coming today. There's a shiny new tomorrow on the way. A day of invention is at hand. It's a mystic futuristic wonderland. Just around the bend, my friend, you'll see a dream or two. If you care to dream and dare to dream, your dreams can all come true. There's a world of wondrous wonder on display. Not bad, eh? Not bad at all, but I thought you fired her. I found a loophole. What kind of loophole? Just a loophole. You're not the only one who's allowed to have secrets, you know. All right, all right. Say, don't you have to get that whatchamacallit to Emmett Brown's booth? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, right. Because the future is coming. It's almost here now. And here he comes, right on cue. No doubt he'll try to talk you out of it, Detective, but you mustn't let your resolution waver. Hello, Crockett. What's going on here? Well, uh, Miss Strickland here seems to think, uh... You should step aside and let the officer do his duty, now. Wait a minute, that's Emmett's levitator up there. Oh, don't be so modest. I'd say you deserve at least half the credit. It was you who tricked poor Emmett into breaking up with me. It was you who manipulated him into dropping my project in favor of this clear hazard to public safety. It was my plan to get him back to inventing what he should be inventing. What's your point? Oh, I think you know exactly what my point is. Emmett's invention isn't going to work, is it? At least not the way poor Emmett thinks it is. How do you know this? I had a very interesting chat with Carl Sagan last night. I found out who Sonny Crockett really is, and where he comes from. Is there something you want to tell me, Sonny? Why don't you call him by his real name? Yakov Shmirnov. Thanks a lot, Doc. An anarchist! A foreign agitator bent on sowing chaos and destruction in the Hill Valley Expo! Annie, you don't believe any of this bullshit, do you? Sorry, uh... Yakov, but I really don't have a choice. Very good. And now, arrest this subversive. Come here. Look, here's the thing. I happen to believe this dame's got a screw loose. But she's been getting some clout in town ever since that business with Kid Tannen. But Emmett's gotta fly that electrokinetic levitator at this demo. His whole future depends on it. And my future depends on making sure he doesn't. The chief reads her column religiously. Well, if I don't do what she says, she's gonna start a campaign to have certain tainted officers removed from the force. Isn't there anything I can do? Not unless you've got some dirt on Edna. Something that'll discredit her in the eyes of the law. Well? I'll dig something up. You do that. In the meantime, you and young Mr. Brown better... Uh... Where is he, anyway? Wait, you haven't seen him? Emmett? Has this foreign radical done something to my Emmett? Maybe you should find him. Oh! You're letting him go? This radical subversive? Just like that? Okay, so, I gotta find Emmett. And do something about Edna. Hi, Trixie. That's techni to you, kiddo. Right. Uh, congratulations on getting the old job back. Thanks. Justice triumphs in the end, you know? Now what can I do you for? So, which exhibits do you recommend? The most popular attractions are the glass house, the future furnishings, and of course, enlightenment under the sea. You know who that is under the diving helmet? That's Jacques Duteau himself! 
course, you need to get tickets if you want to see the main attractions. How much are tickets? Aw, put your money away. Here, you're kind of like family now, you know? Thanks. You seen Emmett around? I'm kind of worried that he's not at his booth. Hmm, let me think. Uh, yeah. He wandered down that way a little while ago. He was talking real intense with another guy. Older guy? Looked a lot like Emmett in the face? Yeah. Uh, uncle or something? Or something. Look, Emmett's demonstration has hit a snag or two. Can you delay his act for a while? Let someone else go before him? Sorry, I don't set the roster, and they won't let me change it. Uh, I can drag my feet a little, but uh, if your friend's not ready to go on pretty soon, we might have to skip his act. Uh, I mean, demonstration. But you can't! Hey, it's just a science demo. It ain't a matter of life and death. Edna Strickland is trying to get Emmett's booth shut down. That dame don't know how to mind her own business, does she? Artie told me how you managed to get your old job back. He did? But it was supposed to be a secret! There's no secrets between us. He couldn't resist telling such a good story. Yeah? Still, I'd like to hear it again, uh, from your point of view. Uh, he didn't tell you anything. Come on, Trixie. I'm dying to know how you got the job back. You won't hear it from me. I don't talk out of turn. Is there anything you can do uh, to get Emmett's booth open again? I wish there was, but I'm just a muse. All we can do is inspire people. Okay, you're a muse. Can you inspire me an idea? I'll try. Well? Maybe it doesn't take effect right away. Thanks. A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? A potted plant? What's this got to do with law enforcement? It's a bug. No, a plant. But it's got a wire recorder hidden inside, see? If we could have got one of these into Tan and Speakeasy, and if he's the kind of guy who talks to plants, we could have busted him a lot earlier. Don't walk off with the recording plant. It's the only one I got. Welcome to the phone booth of the future, made with Atlas Glass. Atlas, unbreakable and soundproof. Our phone is hands-free, so you can enjoy a sandwich or a cigarette while chatting with friends in perfect privacy. Would you like to place a call? Yes, I'd like to talk to... Unfortunately, this phone booth only accepts incoming calls. This plant doesn't belong here. There's nothing futuristic about it. In the house of the future, fresh fruit baskets will be replenished daily by fleets of fruit-bearing helicopters. Ah, oh, it's wax! Klondike 4253. Hill Valley X 
Baseball, where the future is coming today. This is Checkney News of Progress. To whom am I speaking? Hi, Trixie. It's me, Sonny. Oh, hi. What can I do for you? Oh, nothing. I was just checking out this snazzy phone. Okay, bye. Bye. Conversation terminated. Greetings again, mortals! This is Techni, Muse of Progress, hoping you're all having a swell time taking in all the exhibits. Don't forget, you can purchase tickets to our main attractions right here at the information booth. Chinese checkers and everything. Okay, call me a snoop. Greetings, forward thinkers of Hill Valley. At casual. Danny, can I talk to Edna for a minute? Be my guest. I'd like a couple minutes of quiet. What's this about? Okay, this is... Stay away. Klondike 4253. Hill Valley Expo, Techni speaking. Who's this? This is Carl Sagan. Ooh, the mysterious Mr. Sagan. What do you want? Can you put Edna Strickland on the phone for me? Sure thing, Mr. Sagan. Hey, Strickland! Somebody actually wants to talk to you. Mr. Sagan, I didn't expect to hear from you again till after the expo. You didn't? Yes. Wasn't that part of our plan? Yes, our plan. How about that plan? Regarding, uh, you know what? You know what? Uh, the little matter we were whispering about yesterday. Oh, that? As a matter of fact, I'm glad you brought it up. I was thinking. Wouldn't it be a good idea to pin it all on Yakov Shmirnov? Uh, uh, pin what on him, exactly? You know, it! Oh, I get it. You're still sore about going to jail. Uh... That was the dog's fault. If he hadn't come galumping up to me right after I started the fire, I could have gotten clean away, and I never would have had to divert suspicion to you. She's the speakeasy arsonist. Carl, is somebody with you? No, it's just you and me. 
You know, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. Every night they'd open up their doors serving illegal drinks and loose women, flaunting their depravity to the world, and the authorities did nothing. So I did what any right-thinking, rock-willed woman would do. I took action. Oh, and such a gorgeous action it was, too. The fires were so beautiful. The alcohol made them go up in such pretty blue flames. Oh, where was I? You were explaining why you burned down the speakeasies. Yes. Did you find my answer to your liking? It was very revealing. Hang up. What? Jeez, Edna was always a loon. I hope that confession's good enough for Parker. Next up on our roster, a man who saw the possibilities in pond scum. Welcome, Ernest Philpot! Thanks, Trixie. Uh, uh, technique. I'm truly honored to be here today among all you pointy-headed type people. Like the lady said, I labor in the field of pawn scum. LG, ladies and gentlemen, is a mysterious and little-known biological you know, I don't Ooh, think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. I think I a lot of people I are going to be interested in that answer. This noble vegetate, and I am here to present my discoveries to a disbelieving world. LG. Cakes, ladies and gentlemen, is the next wave in the agricultural Shh, he's approaching. of the 20th century. Hey, Danny, LG's do you mind, comrade? We're busy trying to protect the expo from the likes of you. This will only take a minute. Our plant recorder. It's not a good idea to steal police property, you know. Listen. No, I don't think I ever asked you why you burned down all those speakeasies. Why? Because no one else was doing anything about them. D Detective Parker, surely you're not going to believe this crudely manufactured forgery of a recording. I'm not sure what to believe, ma'am. But based on this crudely manufactured forgery, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to the station to answer a few questions about your whereabouts on the night of the speakeasy fires. Oh, very well. I... Heavens, what's that? You know, one of these days I should really stop falling for hey. that. Hey, does this mean that the barricades can come down from Emmett's booth? Let's take that as a yes. Emmett's gotta be around here somewhere. Thank you, Ernest. Do be sure to drop by his booth and sample an algae cake. I have, and it was very... interesting. Huh. I will be back later to highlight another of our fine exhibitors. See you soon! Enlightenment awaits you under the sea. Excuse me, Mr. Dudo, Jacques Dudo, at your service. I'm looking for a friend of mine, Emmett Brown. Tall young guy, reddish-brown hair. A distracted look? That's him. Any idea where he went? He just passed by here with an older gentleman. I think they were headed into the house of glass. Great, thanks. Algae cakes! Enlightenment awaits you under the sea. Here's my ticket. Give me a ride in that thing. Thank you, monsieur. I hope you will find your trip to the bottom of the sea best in life. to him. Perfect. Welcome to the Atlas House of Glass, the future of domestic life. 
Okay, Emmett, let's get you out of here. Emmett! Emmett, don't listen to him. He he's crazy. I'm still not sure about this business proposal, Mr. Sagan. Let me explain it again. Atlas glass. Unbreakable and soundproof. Soundproof glass. Great. Our living space can be configured to meet the needs of any family. Need a private study? Simply slide the walls in. Or slide them out again to create a spacious banquet hall. Something's blocking it. Emmett, get out of this place and back to your booth. You're gonna miss the demo. Come on, Emmett, look up here. Ah. Damn it, look up here! Ah. It won't slide open. Come on, Emmett, look up here! Ah! This is more complicated than it looks. When I moved that first wall, I opened one passage. Something's blocking. It won't slide open. When I moved that first wall, I opened one passage, but I blocked another. It won't slide open.
damn it. Where did you take him now, Doc? The next exhibitor on our list is Officer Danny Parker of the Hill Valley Police Force. Officer Parker is going to demonstrate a few of the many marvelous tools that our boys in blue will soon have at their disposal. The criminal element has truly met his match today. Officer Parker? Uh, it seems our next exhibitor is unavoidably detained, but I'm sure his presentation would have been both enlightening and exciting. Um, how about a round of applause just for the heck of it? Welcome to the world of tomorrow, where a man's home is truly his castle. Here's my ticket. Give me a ride in that thing. I don't think so. What do you mean? I've got a ticket. You have to honor my ticket. It's uh, uh, the, the wrong kind of ticket. Sorry. I know you're in there, Doc. Doc? Yes, I am a doctor of marine biology, but I fail to understand what you're... Quit fooling around, Doc. What have you done with Emma? Stop! Help! I'm being attacked! Sonny! What are you doing? You can't assault the exhibitors. You don't understand. He's kidnapped Emmett. The boy is obviously uh, confusing. I'll say he is. You want I should toss him out on his ear? That won't be necessary. Do you know who that is? That's Jock Duteau of the Oceanic Institute. No, it's not. It's... Please keep it down. The expo went through a lot of trouble and expense to secure Professor Duteau. We can't afford to antagonize him. But if you've got a complaint against him, we can straighten it out after the show. But if you make another scene like that, I'm afraid I'm gonna have you expelled from the hall. Hey, Artie. What do you think? Quite a setup, huh? The expo? Sure. But I was wondering... This ticket should get me into any exhibit on the floor, right? Sure. That's a pee ticket. Well, the guy at the aquarium is refusing to honor it. Hmm. There must be some mistake. Come on, let's straighten this out. Professor Duteau, this young man claims you refused to take his ticket. Not at all. I'm only too happy to take his ticket. Please, climb the ladder, and I will raise the bathroom's fee. My dear, what is the matter? The gears, they must have become stuck. I am afraid I cannot raise the atmosphere at this moment. What a shame. Yes, it is, it is, it is. Well, I will work on that problem. Perhaps if you come back later. Come down, please. The atmosphere exhibit is current. Step back! What does it matter if there's nobody in the bathosphere? It's very bad form. Oh, sorry. Hiya, folks. It's me, Techni, Muse of Progress, gracing you once again with my presence. And speaking of presents, what better gift could Hill Valley offer the world than this magnificent science and technology exhibit, hey folks? If you haven't done so already, I urge each and every one of you to take a peek at Furnishings of the Future, right here in our main hall. Tickets are available from me, Techni, at our information desk. It's an old lot of those superstition. A crimp horse needs imminent doom. It does if there's somebody inside the bathosphere, but I thought you said there wasn't anybody in the bathosphere. 
and dares not. I command you untrim that horse! Funny. You'd think it was you who was running out of air, not the guy in the bathosphere. I... I don't know who, what you're talking about. It's as if you two were connected somehow. Step off the horse! Raise the bathosphere, Doc. I won't do it! Then neither will I. Can't you see he's messing with us? There's nothing wrong with those gears. Monsieur Dutal is doing his best to fix the exhibit. Hovering over him like that doesn't help the situation any. So long, the years they have become unstuck. There, see? It was just a malfunction after all. Let's get you out of there. Uh, Emmett Brown? Then it was true. Hey, you. Hey, he just took that guy's wallet. I think he took his wallet. Oh. Remind me not to become an oceanographer. I guess I must have a touch of claustrophobia. Never should have gone in there. Well, we've all got problems. Now, you'd better get back to your booth Funny before... Funny thing is, I don't even remember going in there. Last thing I recall, I was in the glass house talking to Carl Sagan. Did you know he's really a scientist? I'd heard. What did he say to you? Oh, he had some sort of spur-of-the-moment business proposition. It was all very rush-rush. I never got the details. It would have meant leaving before the expo was over, so I told him that... Say, where'd he go? You know? Carl Sagan? He had to leave. One of his experiments blew up on him. Nah, oh, I know how that is. Greetings and salutations to all our honored guests. I am Techni, Muse of Progress. And it is my pleasant task once again to highlight one of the great minds who was hard at work building a better tomorrow. I think that's me. I'm next on the roster. But are you ready? No, I don't have a choice. Did you bring the static accumulator? Oh, right. Here you go. Great. Come on, let's get up there. He's been hard at work dreaming up gizmos and banging them together in his garage. And who knows? One of this kid's gizmos just might take off and change the life of everybody in town. Could it be the very thing he's brought to share with us today? It wouldn't be the first time the world was changed by a kid barely on That ought to do it. Are the block bearings all in the raised position? Block bearings, block bearings. Raised position, check. Then it looks like all systems are go. Wish me luck. Don't have to. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Emmett Brown! Objection! Objection, Your Honor! I hereby demand that the scientific demonstration of one Emmett Letra Brown be terminated and forfeit by reason of insanity! I declare him to be in contempt of me, his father! Where is he? Hand him over this instant! Emmett, are you up there? <clears throat> you don't think you can shelter him? Maybe Emmett would come out from wherever it is he's hiding if you tried the reasonable approach. This is the reasonable approach. Don't antagonize him. Well, if you're not going to say anything. So he is up there with you. Thanks a lot. Son, I order you to come down from there this second! I want to speak to my son! Emmett's not ready to talk to you, uh, directly. Oh, God. I suppose you're his mouthpiece? I guess so. 
Yeah. You can't talk him out of it. His mind is made up. So, if talking won't work, there's always threshing. If I can say so, sir, the problem is, is you're coming on too strong. You intimidate him. I don't intimidate him enough. That's the problem. Can't you two have it out later? You mean after he's gone through with this ridiculous stunt? Yeah. No! Stay right there. I'm not going anywhere. You dare to- Emmett, I'm not talking to him. There's no point. Just go deal with them. What have you got to lose? That's what they said to Custer. So, what's your plan? I just stand here like this indefinitely. After a few centuries, the process of petrification will set in, and that'll be that. Okay, that is a plan. Maybe he'll give you a fair chance to explain yourself. He is a judge, after all. Yes, a judge who's already passed sentence. He won't listen to me. He never has. I'll be right back. So, is your client prepared to make a statement? He says it's no use talking to you. Y you never listen? That only shows how pig-headed he is. Of course I listen. If he can justify his craziness, I'll be only too happy to indulge it. Stay right there. Fear! Emmett, I'm not talking to him. You heard him. He said he'll listen to you. Well... At least give it a shot. Father? Son? You've never understood the first thing about me. All you want to do is step on me, squelch my natural instincts. Understand. You don't know what it's like Let's to be young. You, you know what it's You're like to have dreams, to have ambitions so great and so powerful that they've got a life of their own. And it's all you can do to hang on for dear life while they gallop on wins. where they must. Don't this is America, Pop. And in America, a person doesn't have to do what his father did. Isn't that why you came to America? To live where there wouldn't be so many rules? Well, we talked. Are you happy? Please, you gotta get out of Emmett's way. I have yet to hear a compelling or even coherent reason why. See, Your Honor, it's just that this demo is so important to Emmett. <laughs> a childish kerfuffle. He'll forget all about it in two weeks' time. That's what I'm afraid of. And it's just... Stubborn, willful, single-minded, incorrigible, and obsessed. Okay, but if you look at it from the right angle, those traits are kinda... good. That may be your angle, Sonny, but I'm not so sure it's the right one. Make no mistake, those are traits that lead to trouble. He gets them from his mother. Look, Your Honor, you don't see it, but there's an awful lot riding on Emmett's demonstration. All the more reason why I've got to put a stop to it. Look me in the eyes, young man. I expect you know my son pretty well by now. Do you seriously think his exhibition is going to be a success? Sure. Uh, sure it will. Ha! You know as well as I how it'll end. Disaster! Maybe, and maybe not, but even if it does, I mean, isn't Emmett entitled to make a few mistakes? Emmett has exceeded his quota for one lifetime. It's my job as his father to see to it. There are no more mistakes. Emmett's just trying to make a name for himself. Maybe things were different when you were a kid, but nowadays you, you gotta take chances. What do you know about taking chances? Try moving to a strange country where you don't speak the language. There's only two dollars to your name. You? You bet your socks, me! And I made out all right, too. How'd your dad feel about it at the time? Papa? He was fit to be tied. He called me a disobedient little... So your father didn't approve of you coming to America? Well, Papa never really understood the younger generation. He came around a bit in the end, but by then it was too late to... Tell him I'll listen to him. I want to listen to him if he wants to talk. 
Emmett. Here to play peacemaker again, Pollyanna. Okay, so he's got a strong personality. Strong personality? Lord save us from strong fathers. Why couldn't I have been born to a nice, wimpy milk toast? Yeah, well, that's no picnic either. The important thing is, fathers can change. Says you. Deep down, he's just worried about you hurting yourself. No amount of physical pain could equal the pain he's already inflicted to my spirit. I really think he means it this time. He won't listen to me. He says you get your stubbornness from your mother. Well, that's the limit. He's not satisfied with insulting me. He's got to drag my mother through the dirt, too. Mother isn't at all like me. She's gentle and sweet and endlessly patient. If anything, I'm more like... Oh, skip it. You were starting to say that you're like... Skip it. Can it be that you and your dad? No. Next subject. Emmett, stop being a dope. You've got your pride. Okay, I, I get it. And so does he, but what's the harm in trying to make peace with the guy? He's your family, and family's important. Sometimes it's, well, even more important than we realize. May I come up? So, you think my new invention is a disaster waiting to happen? Yes, yes I do. And I'm here to say, if any son of mine is going to make of himself a public disaster, I insist on being there to support him. Pop! You're gonna change your tune once you see this baby go airborne. You see, the force field generated by the static accumulator... Marty, give Trixie the signal. We're ready for liftoff. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for bearing with us through that unavoidable delay. And now the Hill Valley Expo is pleased as punch to present Mr. Emmett Brown and his electrokinetic levitator! I could change her. Things could be different. Forget about it. Come on. We gotta find a way to stop her before. No, don't come any closer. Stop. Go away. But... Move. Move. Marty. Oh my god! Doc! Say something! Chromium, lithium, potassium, iridium, titanium, ruthenium. I'll get, I'll get help! Newspaper. What? You mean... Get you to a hospital, Doc. You're gonna be okay. Yes. Oh, I think I am 
going to be okay, Marty. No, come on, Doc. Doc, don't do this. Don't go. Doc, come back. Marty, have you been out here the whole time? Damn it. Um, is it over already? Oh, it's over, all right. You missed a very <laughs> wild party. I'm afraid I've been banned from the expo for the next 50 years. And if I were you, I wouldn't go back in either. At least not until all the broken glass is swept up. Oh, what was I thinking? Naturally, the ionic wind generated by an electromagnet of that size is going to play havoc with a merely mechanical steering mechanism. We need a much more advanced control system. I wonder if we could find a way to translate the body's own gravitational field into electrokinetic force, one might be able to direct the ionic current simply by shifting one's weight through Great Scott, that's it! What about your father? Oh, yes, I suppose I should wait for him to finish dealing with the officials. I can't say he was exactly thrilled with the unexpected turn my demonstration took. But you heard him in there. He understands that a life of science has its ups and downs. The way I see it, it's those little mistakes along the way that advance us along the pathway of knowledge. Come on, there's no time to lose. Let's get back to the lab and... I'm sorry, is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. I'm... I'm fine. You don't sound fine. Don't worry about it. It's got nothing to do with you. What? You're a complete mystery to me, Marty. Where you come from, what you're doing here... But there's one thing I do know. Whatever it is, it does have something to do with me. Please, Emmett, don't ask What's any... What's this? Come on, let me see. I deserve an explanation. You wouldn't understand. Oh, yeah? Try me. What's that? An explanation. But you've got to promise me. Don't look at it until you get the key to the city. Huh? Emmett! Just promise. Emmett, where are you, my son? I'll be right there, Pop. Key to the city? I don't understand. And you can't understand. Not for a long time. It would do irreparable damage to something. Just, just say you promise. Okay, I promise. Wait, I will see you again, right? I guarantee it. Damn it! So, you were the same Marty. Funny how memory can play tricks on a person. I remembered you being much taller. How was the ceremony? Long. You've got a theatrical way of sending messages. Only way I could do it without messing up your timeline. Very clever, but what are you doing in 1931? I came to stop you from marrying Edna. 
Edna Strickland. I could never marry her. I mean, she was my first love, but after she broke my heart and tried to sabotage my career, I never saw her again. Never mind, it's better I don't know. Let's just get back to 1986. That is, unless your presence has caused any other time anomalies. Me? Nah, no. Well, I'm still a little confused about my... Where is he? Where is that no good son of mine? He's not worthy of the McFly name. You see my Artie anywhere? Artie McFly? That's the one. Just got a call from Melvin at the city records office. He tells me the dad blamed fool's gun and got himself hitched to a Canadian floozy. Can you believe it? Hitched? Married. I swear, that boy's gonna put his pop on an early grave. So that's how she got her job back. Ah, he, he's married the wrong grandma. I mean, Trixie's not my grandma. And if she's not my grandma, I'm not me. Wait, that was great grandpa Willie. I met him when he was a baby. He peed on me. Holy crap, uh, Doc, I'm gonna disappear again. Calm down, Marty. You seem reasonably solid right now. Whatever the problem is, I'm sure we can undo it with the help of- That car! Oh, great. How the hell did she get back here? She? You? You're not Edna. What's going on here? Is this some plot to put me in the nut house? No, it's all very simple, Danny. Oh, I'm sure it is. Tell me, did I or did I not just chase Edna Strickland off in this car? Not this exact car, but a car just like it. A car with a nasty habit of disappearing into thin air? Well... Wait, Edna Strickland just disappeared in the DeLorean? If that's what you call it. It made a loud noise, and then wham! Nothing! Great Scott! Marty, do you have any notion what date she might have jumped to? None at all, Doc. See, that DeLorean's time circuits are out of whack. They could jump to any date at all. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. Let's just hope she jumped into the future. The far future. If she's jumped into the past... You think she might mess up the time stream? Wait a minute. This is Edna. Of course she would mess up the time stream. Uh, guys, you mind telling me what the hell you're... Uh-oh. Doc? Did we just leave Hill Valley? No, I believe Hill Valley just left us. How? Something must have happened to it. A long time ago. Well, now you two look at my lost. Hey, what on earth is that thing? Oh, uh, it's, uh, it's an experimental vehicle. Pay it no mind. Look, maybe you can help us. Where exactly are we? We're a little lost. For this point of my rounds, that's where you are. About 25 miles outside of Hayesville. Take a wrong turn, did you? In a matter of speaking. Tell us. We're looking for Hill Valley. Well, which is it? A hill or a valley? No, it's a town. It's a town called Hill Valley. Hill Valley a town? Say, I, I think I once heard that there was a town here a long time ago. Don't know much about it, though. Just as I suspected. When did Hill Valley go away? Oh, heck, I don't know. That was all before I was born. Then, whatever it was, it must have happened at least 45 years ago. Nobody much cares to settle around here nowadays. My dad tried to buy a farm in this area years ago, but he got run off by Scary Mary. Scary Mary? Well, that's what we all call her. Lives a couple miles from here. I make a monthly drop at her place. She's a fiend for news. Takes all the papers in the county, never throws one away. Say, if there's anybody who can tell you what happened to Hill Valley, it's her. 
Can you direct us to her? It's imperative that we talk to her. Sorry, fellas, but I'm pretty sure she won't talk to you. Why wouldn't she talk to us? The thing of it is, guys, Mary's older than dirt, but she's also a little touched, if you catch my drift. She doesn't like strangers. I'm sure we can handle her. We'll be very polite. Please, we gotta see her. Well, okay, if you insist. Take a right turn just after the bridge, then follow the wheel ruts till they come to an end. You'll have to go the last quarter mile on foot. Good luck, and don't say I didn't warn you. I got a notion I'll be kicking myself for sending you up there. Can I drive? Mary Pickford. 